the new navigation tree library that is available for a Compose multi-platform is now officially stable. That means you can use it in a production. Now, for those of you who don't know, a navigation tree library was made to eventually replace the original Compose navigation library. It offers an improved API that gives you much more greater control over the back stack and provides out-of-the-box solution for implementing adaptive layouts in your app. Besides that, a co-independence injection library has recently announced a new alpha version that includes a separate navigation tree artifact, which provides a brand new API to work with. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the navigation tree library usage with the new Kotlin DSL in a Compose multi-platform project. As always, I'm not going to write the code while recording this video, because it will be much more efficient to just go through already developed project. So here is what I have prepared so far. So we have a coin library version 4.2.0 alpha 2, which supports that navigation 3 as well. Then we have the navigation 3 1.0.0, so the official stable version, and this navigation 3 view model artifact as well. Below you can also see uh, what kind of dependencies we have added in this project. So we have a Kotlin X uh, serialization. We need this uh, serialization library to use with uh, our navigation library as well. Then we have navigation tree runtime, UI and uh, vModel. And then a uh, coin uh, Android, which is used uh, to obtain the Android context uh, if we need to. Uh, we have a coin core, compose, compose vModel and the new artifact uh, coin navigation tree. So let me walk you through this uh, whole project that uh, I have already prepared. So we have our uh, app Kotlin file, which is the main entry point for uh, both Android and iOS. We are using here the uh, entry provider and the navigator, uh, which I have defined uh, separately. So this is the API which is uh, familiar for those who already use Navigation 3, right? So now we are no longer using the nav host, now we are using the nav display instead. And we are providing the back stack to it explicitly. So let me first open up the navigation package to show you this uh, custom navigator which I have uh, prepared. So it's just a simple class that uh, contains this actual uh, back stack, along with the start or the initial destination. This uh, class will be a, a singleton throughout uh, our project so that we can uh, successfully save and persist uh, our uh, back stack. Besides that, we also have uh, two uh, helper functions used to navigate to a different uh, screen and to navigate uh, back to a previous screen in the back stack. So it's pretty convenient and simple. And that's about our navigator uh, class, okay? Uh, we're also injecting that uh, same class in our app Kotlin file and we are providing the navigator or its actual back stack to this uh, nav display function. We also have that uh, on back uh, callback which will allow us to clear the back stack or at least clear the latest uh, or the last uh, screen on top of the back stack. Then we have this uh, entry provider, which is uh, being provided by the new uh, coin library. So we have this uh, coin entry provider uh, function that allows us to provide this uh, entry provider more conveniently. And we have this uh, entry decorators, which are used to uh, successfully manage our uh, view models throughout our application. Because if we don't use uh, these two, then our uh, view models uh, will be persisted or uh, active across uh, our uh, whole application lifecycle instead of uh, being cleared after we uh, pop uh, a specific uh, screen from the back stack. I'm going to show you that uh, later. But for now, let me just here uh, show you a couple of more uh, things before we uh, open up this application. Now, when using this uh, navigation tree with a coin, you don't need to inherit or use that uh, nav key uh, like we have previously used uh, in the navigation tree library. Now we can simply define our destinations inside the serial class annotated with a serializable annotation. And that's sufficient. So that's about our screen class, right? Now, you might be wondering, uh, where have we defined our actual destinations? So in this case, we have uh, two screens, uh, home and details, right? And uh, each one of these uh, two screens contain a uh, view model that we can actually observe and just print a simple statement when this uh, view model is initialized and when it's cleared as well. So it's practically the same logic for both of these uh, view models. Uh, that's how it works. Now let me here show you this actual DI package. So we have now a navigation module. I have called this uh, coin module specifically navigation module because it will contain uh, all the logic and uh, composable screens related to our app navigation, okay? So in this case, first we are initializing the navigator uh, function as a singleton and we are also providing a start destination to it. Then we have this specific navigation uh, DSL function that declares a singleton navigation entry within a coin module. So this function registers a composable navigation destination as a singleton in the coin module, allowing access to module level dependencies within this composable. So uh, from this example right here, you can see that uh, our details screen actually contains an argument, okay? And we can extract that uh, argument very easily from the lambda of this uh, navigation uh, function, okay? Now, the navigation logic is actually triggered from this uh, navigator itself, and we are able to access this uh, instance by calling this uh, get function directly from our navigation module. So right there, we can just call that the navigate2 function, 
and also that the goback function as well. Plus, as I already mentioned, the actual uh, navigation argument from our details screen is available here as a lambda, okay? And we are able to extract that uh, ID and uh, pass it to our screen very easily. Besides this uh, navigation module, we also have a, a coin module that we are using to actually initialize uh, our coin library, right? And here we are also initializing those uh, view models as well. Now here for the details uh, view model, you will notice uh, one new DSL syntax that I'm using to pass uh, a, a parameter directly to the details view model. Right? So in this case, our details uh, vmodel actually requires that uh, ID parameter, which with the previous Compose Navigation library, we have used the save state handle to obtain that argument. But now we can use this uh, DSL to extract those uh, parameters and uh, call this uh, get function on this uh, parameters folder to properly satisfy the parameter of our details uh, vmodel when uh, we are initializing it. Okay? Now let me open up here our details uh, screen to show you how we are actually initializing this uh, uh, vmodel as well. So this uh, coin vmodel function is uh, used to initialize our uh, details vmodel, right? And we also have a function called uh, parameters of, which is uh, used to provide those uh, parameters explicitly to our uh, factory vmodel if we need to, right? So if we don't uh, need those uh, parameters, like for example in our home screen, in that case we can just call the coin vmodel function without calling this um, uh, parameters of uh, like we are doing here in the details uh, screen, right? So now, if we uh, launch this application and observe the locket, right, so in this case, uh, we are currently at our home screen, which means the home vmodel has been initialized. When we navigate to our details uh, screen, then uh, the details uh, vmodel will be initialized as well. And when we go back from the details screen to the home screen, so when we clear our uh, details uh, screen from the back stack, in that case, the vmodel will be cleared as well. Right? However, if you do not uh, use these kind of uh, decorators as we are using in this uh, uh, nav display, like for example if I try to comment out these uh, two, let's see uh, what will happen now in our app. So in that case, the home view model will be initialized uh, as before. When we go to the details screen, the details will be initialized. And when we go back, you will notice that the details uh, view model will uh, not be cleared. And that's why it is important to add these uh, two decorators in your app. So there you go, that's how this uh, new uh, coin uh, navigation 3 DSL actually uh, looks like. I think it has a really nice and uh, user-friendly uh, API. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and uh, whether you are planning to use this uh, new navigation 3 library along with the uh, coin navigation 3 artifact uh, as well. Also, don't forget to leave a like to this video if you find it helpful. And uh, thank you for watching.